What's up, YouTube? Um, this is Buddha coming to y'all with a very bad update. Um, first of all, I'm away at school. I um, am finishing up the nursing program. I'll be done in April. So I'm not at home right now with Boma but, um, and my little baby, Malia. But um, basically, I'm going to just jump right into it. I um, had a late-term miscarriage. Um, the day I turned four months pregnant is the day I miscarried, which was just on February 7th. Today is um, February 16th, 2017. So, um, basically, like, I don't know what happened. The doctors don't know what happened. Um, what, um, basically what happened the night it was February 6th um, I went to use the bathroom and then I felt like a slide and um, I touched down there um, to my private area touched down there and felt the bag the amniotic sac like hanging hanging like you know hanging down hanging out I didn't feel the baby but um, I kind of started to panic right away and so I just hopped up and um, called 911 so the ambulance got here they took me to a hospital um and uh anyway took me to the hospital so um i got there i got to the emergency room it took them forever to um like tell me something but they gave me an ultrasound pretty quick and of course the ultrasound tech didn't say nothing so i just kind of figured something was you know was bad so uh then. After that, the I think it was a nurse practitioner came in. She told me that that um I was dilated. Um, the top of my cervix was dilated, but not not the bottom. It's weird. It was like a um like the the bag was coming out like in a um what you call it like an hourglass effect. So so like the top of my cervix was open, so it looked like this. So the bottom of my cervix was closed, but the top of it was open. So the bag was basically slipping through and she like, you know, it looks like you're having a miscarriage and, um, but you know, we're going to call the OB doctor and see what they say. So at this point I was just crying and just scared and just devastated because I was pretty sure my baby had a heartbeat cause I felt my baby moving around. So, um, then, um, after that, uh, the OB doctor said, put me in Tr Trendelenburg. That's just a position where the head, your head is down here, your feet is up. So they try to use gravity to help um, prevent, you know, the bag from coming out or the baby from coming out. So um, after that, they took me up to the OB floor and they monitored me and stuff. And they checked the baby's heart rate. The baby still had a heartbeat. And um, so the next day... Um, the doctor came in, the OB doctor came in and she said that, um, she needed to, uh, she needed to, um, examine me. So she examined me and she saw that, the, that's when she saw that only the top of my cervix was dilated, but not the bottom part. So, um, they, she said that it was best for me to get transferred to a hospital in Birmingham where, um, they could probably do more for me. Um, so they, she transferred me and then, um, it took an hour and a half to get there. It was a really bumpy ambulance ride, but I was just praying and, you know, just trying to stay strong. I'm just like, just get to the next step. Just get to the next step. Cause I, I didn't lose hope. I didn't lose hope all the way until, um, my baby's heart wasn't beating anymore. So the whole time I was hopeful and, um, so we get to the hospital and I had, like I said, so much hope that they would be able to give me like a cerclage where they uh, sew up the cervix and prevent the baby from coming out. But they took one look and they saw that the bag was like out through my cervix. So they um, basically told me at that point it was nothing that they could do. And um, so after that, um, it's basically when I just like basically broke down and I just was like my baby's heart is still beating like what do you mean 
So, so after that, um, they just, you know, was like, I'm sorry and stuff. And when I had my OB rotation for nursing, you know, they teach you to, you know, to say certain things. So they were saying these certain things to me. And I'm like, I learned this already in school. Stop talking to me like that. I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. Like, just don't, like, I don't want, like, just don't talk to me like that. Like, I learned what to say to a woman in this situation. I never thought I would be in this situation. So it was, it was just hurting me more because it was like, just don't tell me that like I don't want to hear that you know and it was nothing towards them of course I I just was sad I didn't snap at them because they were actually really supportive because I was going through this all by myself you know my husband is at home with my baby so I'm all the way in Alabama and everything was just happening like so quick you know what I mean so I'm I'm all the way in Alabama I'm going through this by myself really the the nurses was there they helped a lot you know what I mean but it's just at that point I didn't want to hear what they were saying to me I didn't want to hear any of that so um then after that um I just they you know they stayed there for a long time they were like it was maybe like six or seven nurses in there they was just really being supportive they I'm pretty sure they took you know into consideration that I was this was I was by myself you know and um they stayed there with me for so long, talking to me, trying to encourage me and everything. And they just watched me cry and they let me cry and they talked to me and everything. And then, you know, um, after that, they just left me alone. Um, I had a, a, a chaplain come in and she prayed with me. I talked to her and everything. And uh, but like I said, still at this point, I had hope because my baby still had a heartbeat. So I'm just like and the doctor and the doctor came in telling me, you know, basically, you are going to miscarry. It's inevitable. So you need to pretty much make a decision at this point. What you're going to do. Do you want us to help you along in, um, miss in, in the, in the process of miscarrying. And of course, um, I, I'm like, no, you know what I mean? Like, I'm regardless of what y'all saying, if my, if my baby's not going to make it, then okay, my baby's not going to make it. That's God's decision. I'm not about to me, a mere human, just be like, yeah, let's, let's do this process. Let me go ahead and, um, push my baby out and let my baby struggle for breath or whatever outside my womb no nope so I told them no and I waited and I waited and so um you know the next day the doctor came in and she talked to me she was like you know we're gonna check you we're gonna give you ultrasound and everything um because earlier that day the lady had the doppler the nurse had the doppler over my belly trying to find a baby's heartbeat but she didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing either. But she tried to say like, yo, yeah, I, I I, think I hear it right here. It's 140. So I was like, okay. So of course, like I said, I still had hope. I'm like, you know, she probably been a nurse for 20 years. You know, I'm not going to sit up here and say, ma'am, I didn't hear a heartbeat, you know. But of course, the nurse can't say, I don't hear a heartbeat. I'm sorry, you know. So um, she didn't hear a heartbeat, but she told me that she did, which was sweet of her. But in my mind, I was like, I don't think I heard anything, you know, but, um, but I still, like I said, I had hope. So I wasn't giving up until I just absolutely knew I had to. She, um, the doctor came in and she was like, we're going to check and see if the baby has a heartbeat and stuff. And, um, you know, but do you want us to go ahead and, you know, help you induce you so that you can, um, so you can begin a labor process and I was like well no you know I said let's just check and see if the baby has a heartbeat first and then we'll go from there so she said okay she brought the ultrasound machine in maybe like 10 to 15 minutes later so um she was checking and um I saw my little baby my little tiny baby in there and uh but she wasn't moving around so um in my man I kind of just knew and so she, because I asked her, I said, you know, can y'all give me another ultrasound anyway? Because I don't have an ultrasound picture of my baby, not one, you know. So she said, okay, you know, we'll go ahead and, and do that. And then, so she was like, um, so she looked and she was like, well, you know, the baby's not moving. Do you want a picture? And I was like, is her heart, is the, I, we didn't know at the time if it was a boy or a girl. But I said, is, is the heart still, is the heart beating? And she pulled it down and I like ultrasound. So I 
I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but I can tell, like I can see. I know, you know, I can follow them where the baby's organs are and everything. And right as soon as she put it over the heart, I saw the heart. I saw her chambers and everything, but I didn't, it wasn't beating. And she just shook her head like, no, it's not beating anymore. And at that point, I just, for some reason, it was God. I had a, a calm over me. I didn't, um, I didn't cry at that point. It was just more of a like, okay, well, God decided, you know, and I know people might be like, oh, you know, people that don't believe in God or whatever. It's like, well, you know, God took the baby back from you. So what are you talking about God? But it's just like, you know, when you go to situations like that, that you crying because the night before I'm calling out, I was calling out to the Lord. I'm calling out Jesus. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to do this? They telling me I can hold my baby and stuff before they take her away. How can I hold her? How can I get through it? Like calling, like calling out to Jesus because I just didn't know what to do. But then the next day came and everything was happening so fast and it happened in that way. And I felt, I felt God's presence. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just, I mean, you, you know, for people who don't believe you just god forbid you put in a situation like that but in a situation like that when you just think you're gonna kill over at any second because of what you're going through because everything is so hard but all of a sudden you can handle it for even if it's just for 15 minutes you know you just have you just have you just have that presence of god and i believe so and I, in, in my heart, I know we live to live again. So I truly believe that God will give me that soul back. God will give me my little baby back, you know, regardless. When it, when God feel like, you know, he want us to conceive again, we will. And we will have another healthy baby, you know. But um, but anyway, I just felt God's presence because all of a sudden, like I said, I was just a calm over me. It was like, okay, well, you know, let's do this. I had been telling my husband not to come the whole time because I'm like, I don't know what's going on, you know. But at that point... I knew that I needed him there with me. So I called him and I said, you know what? Pack Monty up, our, our little baby. I said, pack her up and come out here. I need to see you. I need my baby. I can't do this alone. I can't do it by myself. So the doctors come in there and they do what they was doing. And everything started progressing so fast. Like, I guess because I had already dilated, like, for a whole day. Um, I was about to deliver. The, I was about to push the baby out. So I called him and I said, you know what? I'm coming home. I found out. I said, when can I fly? Am I able to fly? They was like, well, we don't know yet. You may be able to fly tomorrow, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I told him to hold off because he wouldn't have made it anyway. I was going to have to do it alone regardless. You know, it's just going to be me and God, you know, and the, the medical staff. So I was gonna have to do it alone regardless. So um so then um I started have I have no pain meds. I started having a lot of pain. So I asked the nurse, I said, Can I just get something for pain? I didn't want no epidural and nothing like that. I wasn't going through all of that. So she um called the doctor, the doctor came in there and I asked, she was like, Yeah, she's in a lot of pain right now. I was in so much pain. It was it was very painful. Like felt like a like I ain't gonna say like a because it was a real labor, but it felt like a labor, like a full term labor. So um then um she the doctor came and she said, Well if you feel like let me just check you because if you're feeling like that it's probably time. check me. And she said, um just so just see if you can push so I pushed and you know it took so it helped the pain so I pushed I just it was just one push and she came out the baby came out and um it was a um a light above me it wasn't on but you know how like the glass covered the light and I could see like in the reflection so I kind of like kind of saw the baby come out a little bit but I just couldn't look at her like that so I just closed my eyes and um I didn't um I just didn't look and so they asked me before did they want did they did I want to see her right away right then and there or did they want me to, did they want them I mean did I want them to go and like you know wrap her up and everything and then bring it to me and earlier I said yeah just wrap her up and bring it to me because I knew that she wouldn't be fully developed and I just didn't feel like at the time I could handle that and they told me, oh, you don't have to see her if you don't want to. And literally, like, a huge part of me didn't want to do it. I wanted to be a coward. I wanted to just, like, be a coward. I'm sorry, God forgive me. Like, I don't mean to, God forgive me. I don't mean to call anybody a coward that, that chose not to see their child. 
like that because that is a tough thing so i'm not judging you or nothing like that but for me personally the type of person that i am in my mind frame i'm like for me for me i'm like i would be a coward if i didn't see my baby if i didn't you know see her off so um i didn't want to because it, it was really hard but um i say yeah you know i'm like i can take it i'm just gonna have to take it it's not right i'm i, I bonded with this baby and everything it's not right for me to just be like no I'm not going, I'm not, you can just take her A little away. while later, um, they have little intercoms or like little walkie talkies or whatever. And they're like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with her. And she ready to see her baby and everything. And so they told me and she was like, she, she was like, she said, it's a girl. It's a girl. And I was, and I was on the phone with my husband and, um, and I told him, like, wow, I said, it's a girl. It was, it was another girl, you know? And I was like, that's crazy. Cause a part of me had a feeling it was a major part of me had a feeling it was a girl. So, um, then um they brought her in they had her in this cute little basket and um had her wrapped up they had her in a little nightgown and had her um laying on the blanket and had her with a little blanket on top of her and um so they brought her in there and they just i was so scared but it was another thing well like i said the calm just came over me it's just like God is with you. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. You got to see your baby off. So I was sitting there and the chaplain was in there and the um, nurse um, social worker was in there. So they brought it to me and I just, she had, I just put the basket on my lap. And um, so I just looked at her. Anybody know me know that I I hate being vulnerable, so I hate making this video. But I just feel like I, it's therapeutic, and for those who is just curious or just want to be nosy or whatever to know what happened, I'm gonna let y'all know what happened because I'm not ashamed. It's sad, but. But my baby existed, you know, and I believe she'll she will exist again. So I'm gonna document it, and I'm gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna get through it. But I just hate for people to see me vulnerable. Like I literally don't cry. Only time I cry is when I'm pregnant because I'm emotional. But I do not cry. Like so, it's just tough for me to make this and let people see me like this. But whatever, you know, it is what it is. But um. So um, they, the the nurse was like, "You want me to help you hold her?" And I was, she was like, "I can hand her to you." So I was um, like, "Yeah, you know, go ahead." I'm like, "We in it, you know? It's just happening." So come on, let me let me just do it. So um, I um, held her. She was seven inches, she's really tiny, like maybe this long, and um, and I think maybe like five ounces or something like that. Really tiny, but formed. She was formed, and um. I mean, she was 16 weeks, you know what I mean? So what, what, you know, that's just four months. She couldn't, of course, survive any of that. So um, I just held her like this in my hand. Cause it's like so, so tiny, you just don't want to break anything. You know what I mean? So I just was holding her and I just was looking at her and I told her, I said, um, I said, mommy, love you. I said, I will see you later. And I said, I'm sorry, I didn't see it coming. And, um, of course, if mommy would have known, I would have done everything I could have done. But like I said, I had no pain. I had no contractions. I had no bleeding, nothing. Just my, my bag just slid down. So I told her I love her and I'll see her later and I just held her for a while for as long as I could take it and I reached the limit and then I'll say, okay, you know, y'all can take her and everything. I made my peace. I prayed for her and I know, you know, she my little angel. So, I mean, it's the purest, the purest thing ever. So I have no doubts that she is with God and God to give her back when, when it's time. But, um, so then I just called everybody, my family and um talked to everybody and just told them and everybody was 
sad and crying and everything and and but everybody was supportive um my two best friends Shade and chanel hi honey loves i love y'all ended up um being able to get a flight back home and i um uh, uh, um they let me fly the next day so i ended up flying the next day um and um that was a long, lonely flight, but I got home and I got to see my husband and my little Malia. It, I was just so excited to see them and it helped me so freaking much. He was sad and he was just being strong for me. He just was real positive, like, we gonna be okay, we gonna see you again. You know, she out there with having she okay, you know, telling me all the right things that I needed to hear. And, uh, which is true, and I believe it too, you know, but, um... And Malia was just everything. I just was like, oh my gosh, so happy to see my baby and kiss her. Cause I've been, um, oh sorry, let me backtrack. I came out here to, I came to Alabama to go to school to fin finish up the nursing program. So I hadn't seen them in a month. So then everything happened. So I wasn't planning on going home until March, cause that's when we get spring break. But everything had happened, so I'm like, I got to go home. So, um. Um, so I, it had been a month that I haven't even touched or smelled them or nothing, kissed them, nothing. So I looked so bad. I looked horrible. And so I was like, let me just, you know, go and get my hair done. I'm tired. No, I'm sorry. It was two days later. I'm like, I'm tired of looking the way that I feel. So I went and got my hair done, um, at a shop. I believe it's called Divine Design. It's in Maryville. And, um, my stylist, Jada Simpson. She was amazing. Her and her mom was amazing. And um, she did an amazing job on my hair. And, of course, it's, I'm natural, so it didn't last. I cut off so much of it. It's like, I don't know, I cut off a lot of my hair. But it, it needed it and everything. But she did an amazing job. Um, so, shout out to Yeah, her. I just got tired of looking the way that I felt. So, I just made sure that I, you know, tried to do something. And, of course, it didn't take the pain away. But it, it didn't hurt to just not look so it, it didn't hurt to look not look so crazy so um yeah so then um i had to come back to school man i just had to be strong i had to lean on god i had to leave it was so hard leaving my daughter it was hard leaving my husband too but you know it's, it's a little bit different because you got this little person looking at you with these eyes like mommy where you going you just got back you know so it was really hard and um but I just keep telling myself, I just got to get to the next step. Just get to the next step. And, you know, it's one day at a time yeah. for anybody that's been through this situation. I'm sorry. And I know it's hard, but we just got to be strong and we got to get through it. And don't try to live too far in the future. Just get to that next step. Pray, lean on God, and just get to that next step and the next step. Sorry, freaking phone call. But, um, yeah, I don't know if I ever like be myself exactly i don't think that a person can fully like heal from something like that but i know that um god is good and and i'm gonna be okay and we're gonna be okay and i'm gonna meet my baby again and i'm so grateful for my husband and i'm so grateful for malia like and i'm grateful for my family and i'm grateful for my best friends but, um so yeah i'm just gonna finish up this nursing program i'm gonna be done in april I'm just do what I gotta do, and um, I'ma just keep, keep pushing. You know, just keep it moving. Sorry, I'm looking crazy. Y'all know I always try to put on a little makeup or something, getting up on here, some lashes or something. But <laughs> I um, I'm in grand mode. You know how that is. I'm like, I'm really like just grinding, just trying to get this program. Done. Yeah, but when I do get done, um, y'all can expect um some more videos hopefully more upbeat videos for me and my husband some more hair hair videos since i have to grow my hair back when i feel up to it i will definitely do that because i do enjoy doing youtube and everything and um, um i'll give you you all another update um uh, about how i'm feeling you know if y'all care y'all can come in and check back on the channel i'll give y'all update about how i'm feeling sorry this is a car we'll see y'all in the next video and thank y'all so much for watching see y'all thanks for watching